Imagine being warned by state officials not to let your children run barefoot in your yard, not to inhale any dust from the outdoors, and not to eat any vegetables grown in your backyard. That is the nightmare. Residents of a Fort Lauderdale neighborhood say they are living, some fearing that chemicals in the soil have left them fighting for their lives. Tonight, Chief Investigative Reporter Michelle Gillen with a gripping, in-depth item investigation, Secrets in the Soil. I know a lot of folks would never want to have to put one of these boxes together. Mm -hmm. And you call these your memory boxes. Right. Terrified she may not live another 24 hours, Gail Martin, a mother and wife whose body is ravaged by cancer, shares a secret. I'm most fearful of the fact of if I live or if I die. I mean, this is the third time that I've had to fight cancer. And you know, and I keep thinking, you know, three strikes and you're out. Preparing for a possible last goodbye, the 49-year-old has created memory boxes for her son and nephew in case she doesn't survive the surgery she'll face in the morning. They are going to be removing what parts of your body? Having my uterus taken out, my ovaries, my fallopian tubes, all of my lip nodes and my stomach and my pelvic area. And it's more of a nightmare than you can imagine. Two years ago, she had a bilateral mastectomy. Both of her breasts removed. I'm not going to have anything. You know, I don't have my breasts. I don't have any of my female organs. What am I? Just this shell, this walking shell. But Gail isn't only haunted by death and disease. She worries about secrets she believes lie in the soil beneath her childhood home, school, and park. Secrets she fears will never be unearthed if her voice falls silent. This isn't about me. This is about people being held accountable for playing with people's lives. And that's what they're doing, playing with people's health. So it's a David versus Goliath battle. Attorney Reginald Klein represents Gail Martin and a hundred others who live or have lived in a neighborhood known as Doors, a community at the center of a lawsuit claiming the city of Fort Lauderdale didn't protect them. We think probably about 20,000 people have been impacted by the um, pollution in this area. Men and women, he says, since childhood unknowingly were exposed to some of the most toxic chemicals on earth. Chemicals, he says, contaminated soil beneath their school, park, and home. The city's known about it. Instead of fixing it since 1997, they keep saying they're going to study it, they're going to study it. In the meantime, every, people are getting sick and dying. Like Gail, many of them grew up playing in a park, going to a school, and living in homes that were built just steps from what years before had been a city-owned garbage incinerator, an incinerator that in the 1950s is said to have spewed so much ash, it appeared as if it were snowing ash. But no one ever told Gail's parents she was spending her days as a child and teen, playing in backyards and schoolyards in city streets, that decades later, tests from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection show were contaminated with some serious toxic chemicals. You have dioxins, you have nitrates, you have lead, you have arsenic. Any one of those could make somebody very sick. And you have a cocktail of them, so you don't know which one is causing your illness or how they work together. My parents didn't know, and no one else knew, but somebody knew. Somebody knew that there was once an incinerator there. Indeed, minutes of a school board meeting in the 1950s refer to the proposed construction of an elementary school for Negroes as the incinerator school site. The title of the line item in the school board minutes was Incinerator School Site. So it wasn't a secret. And that is because it was for the Negroes. I truly feel that if we were on the other side of the track, just a few miles down, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. Standing outside the locked gates of where that incinerator once stood, Mickey Hinton. He's president of the Doors Homeowner Association. And if there's one man who's been trying to unearth the secrets of the soil here, it is him. I tried to get answered, and I was always put on hold. He pushed to have the soil here tested. My house is less than a block away. After watching neighbors suspiciously fall ill, Chillingly, his hunt for answers began long before Gail, his daughter, got the news she had cancer. According to doctors' reports, tests show that Gail's cancer was not genetic. Her doctors urging her to consider the possibility that it could be linked to something in the environment she grew up in. 
whether that was the diet you ate the air you were exposed to the ground that your home was built on or where you went to school what does that do to you? it kills me it just kills me. According to a public health assessment report prepared by the Florida Department of Health, the city's Lincoln Park complex, which includes the vacant incinerator site, cleaned up grounds of the former school, and a refurbished playground present no apparent health hazard. The city has spent nearly $1 million to cap contaminated soil beneath that park. However, it goes on to say that past ash exposures could have increased cancer risk moderately due to arsenic ingestion. And the report's author is recommending yard-by-yard -yard testing of homeowners' property. We sat down with Fort Lauderdale Mayor Jim Noggle. While he cannot comment on the lawsuit filed against the city, we did discuss resident concerns. In their opinion, the city knew in the late 90s that there were contaminants under that park and that they didn't tell that no one told the residents well it was written about in the newspaper and and uh, there was other public information about it yeah, but imagine if you knew you're living right in an area where you've got state representatives folks saying we believe we need to have more testing then you know they're do and they're doing testing, but we they're don't know. They're not doing testing. We they, they say to me they're not doing testing. Well, um, we were told that they were going going to do additional testing. Records show that a soil test of city property was anticipated for February, but the man in charge of the project says it's not yet been determined if that additional test is needed. Meanwhile, current recommendations by state health officials for yard-by-yard -yard testing of homeowners' properties have not been carried out. If you were living on that street or you sent your child to that school or played in that park, would you not want someone to say to you, hey, we have found arsenic, dioxin. Well, you know, we, we, um, uh, you, you pretty much find those things anywhere that you test. Little solace for Gail Martin. Just days after her most recent surgery, she is grateful to be alive and have a voice she intends to use. I need to make people con conscious of this, make people aware, raise awareness that, you know, you need to know where you live. You need to know what was there before you were there. In response to the lawsuit, the city has filed a motion to dismiss. As all parties head to court, the battle continues over getting homeowners' yards tested to rule in or out whether their soil is toxic. At issue, where to get that money and who might pay and we'll continue to look into those questions. Is anybody studying, monitoring to see how many people have had cancers, if there's a real cluster there? Especially since people have moved in the neighborhood and out of the neighbor. Who might have what and when did they die? And that's exactly what many of the residents are asking for. That's why, in part, Gail went before cameras and what could have been, she feared, her last night before surgery, her last night with her children, mm. to go before cameras so that at least her nightmare, as she calls it, is not a secret. Well, maybe this will start the monitoring system then, and we'll get to learn a lot more. Thanks, Michelle.